that the fourth one uh, is the monk's lifestyle. You know, the, the Buddha, before he was enlightened, uh, he used to go to the forest and practice meditation and strive in the spiritual path, uh, get out of samsara. And after the Buddha was enlightened, uh, he still lived his uh, life uh, in the forest. He did come up to the big cities uh, to be famous. Uh, he lived in the forest, uh, although he didn't go here and there to preach the Dhamma. And in one of the suttas, the Buddha said, uh, there are two reasons uh, why he continues to live in the forest. One is he has a happy abiding, nobody to disturb his peace. Uh, can do what he like, meditate when he wants to meditate. You see, uh, even when he wants to have a answer a call of nature, also nobody to to stop him. <laughs> uh, he can do it easily. Uh, so the first one is a uh, happy abiding. Second one, the Buddha says, uh, out of compassion for future generations. Uh, this set of people don't understand why, out of compassion uh, for future generations, uh, the Buddha lived in the forest. The Buddha is trying to show us uh, that the way out of samsara uh, is to practice a holy life uh, in the forest, to give up worldly things, because worldly things, uh, even though they give us uh, much uh, happiness and enjoyment in this life, uh, but Eventually, uh, if you were attached to it, uh, it gives you uh, suffering at the end. That's uh, what the Chinese say. Tao Ti Boi Ko, right? The beginning is sweet, the end is bitter. Uh, so a lot of people are like that, only people, uh, they want happiness here and now. But in the end, uh, they beat suffering. Uh, so the Buddha is showing us the way out of samsara and he is uh, trying to tell us that, that the way out of samsara is to give up worldly things, uh, yeah. retreat from the world. Yeah. I wish a lot of uh, monks now uh, don't practice. Uh, during the Buddha's time uh, there were no town monasteries, all the monasteries were in the forest. Yeah. So. Uh, also, uh, the monk's lifestyle, uh, you find uh, that uh, the monk goes out arms drawn. Uh, the monks, uh, even uh, the robes he wears, are different from lay people. Uh, shaves his head bald uh, so that he doesn't uh, need to look uh, handsome or pretty. Uh, it's a very simple lifestyle. Uh and giving up worldly pleasures, etc. etc. is, uh, is uh, showing the way to actually out of suffering and to attain happiness. Yeah. The monk's lifestyle is Tao Ko Boi Ti. Beginning is suffering, bitter, and the end it's sweet. When I first became a monk, it was a lot of suffering for me. <laughs> I had a reasonably good lifestyle and, uh, before I became a monk. And after I became a monk, I went to a very strict uh, monastery in America where you take one vegetarian meal a day, you have to work the whole day. And in the morning when we start working, uh, at 8 o'clock in the morning, uh, it's on an empty stomach. No coffee to drink, no tea to drink, nothing, no bread to eat. There's water to drink and then we had to start working. And the work was pretty heavy, something I had to carry. Buddha images in Taiwan. They had to plant apple trees, and the big uh, bamboo. You know. And uh, my weight went down from 120 to 96. <laughs> And uh, monks may were very unfriendly. You know, American uh, people uh, like Ajahn Sumedho uh, mentioned, uh, maybe not in the talk, uh, when we talk to him in the room, said, Americans are very direct. Tell you in the face, you know, they do something wrong. I got scolding every day. And I told him, uh, one of the monks even scolded me, four letter word. <laughs> American monk. 
so blind. Uh, so it was a lot of uh, mental torture for me. Uh, so much so uh, that I broke down and cried uh, one day. <laughs> the first one year uh, was a lot of suffering. Uh, I eventually got used to it. Uh, so that is a monk's life, uh, beginning a lot of suffering, but slowly you get used to it. When I came back from America, I went to Thailand. Then uh, we go on Armstrong, beg for our food, and uh, the food is not very good. And at one time I was staying with a, monk, a group of Teochew monks. You know, Teochew monks like to drink very thick Chinese tea. Every day at 4, 4 p.m., uh, they will make that tea. This is a small kettle, you know, they stuff it full of uh, uh, tea leaves. Uh. <laughs> So they, they, yeah, don't eat with, don't drink with them. Uh, it's not, uh, not so nice. Uh, so every day they call me to drink with them. But I was not born a Teochew, <laughs> so I didn't have a Teochew stomach. <laughs> After a while, I got gastric. <laughs> so I came back to Malaysia, and this gastric also was bothering me. And I was staying in the cave. Uh, so then I tried to take cheese, and uh, because in Thai tradition is allowed, but I found cheese didn't suit me. It's too oily. Too salty. <laughs> you know, there was a time when there was a lot of dukkha. Eventually, you get over it. You know, as the Buddha said, you know, in the suttas. You know. So now, year by year, you get more used to it. You know, it's becoming sweeter and sweeter. You know. 